YouTube is a community, and the best way to get to know the people in your community is to ask them questions. So let's do that. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Celtic Clydesdale Show. I'm Jim, and I am the Celtic Clydesdale. In this episode, I'm going to talk to two of my fellow triathlete YouTubers and uh, ask them some questions about how they got into triathlon, what their first triathlons were, what they like to eat when they don't care what they're eating, and, you know, some other questions. So, without further ado, let's make it happen. All right, the first question I wanted to ask is, when and where was your first triathlon? And um, I'm going to throw that question initially out to uh, Matt Legrand. Uh, first triathlon was a sprint triathlon in Albany, Oregon. Uh, I I did do one um, triathlon before that. It was uh, like a tria triathlon, just as like a kind of a training day triathlon thing with the swim club that I train with. And uh, the Albany triathlon that I first did, um, I have a running background, so I kind of stopped running and picked up triathlon. And uh, I thought, you know, I would run faster. Um, but I think like everyone's first triathlon, you come out of the water and, you know, in this case it was cold, you bike really hard, you know, and, uh, if you're not, you know, used to biking, you're getting crushed on the bike, you get on the run and your legs are just rubber. And that was definitely the case with me. And I, I still ran fast for a triathlon. I just didn't run fast compared to, you know, a normal 5k from, you know, my old standards. But uh, I do remember that race specifically, like thinking, you know, like, oh, my, you know, my legs are pretty strong. I'm a decent runner and biking really hard and just getting passed by, you know, some older lady on a bike. And I was just thinking, like, what is going on here? How am I not a little bit faster on the bike than some of these people? But uh, that was a super fun event. Um, did a couple of triathlons that like summer season and kind of finished it off with like an Olympic distance triathlon. Uh, and then have been doing races ever since. You know, Matt, that reminds me of my first triathlon. I actually got passed by some guy who was 65 years old. Um, at the time, 2008, I think I was 33. Yeah, that kicked my butt and uh, that swim did too because that was actually the first time I did an open water swim in my first triathlon. Uh, next up, I'm gonna ask that same question and I'm gonna send it out to the fat triathlete, Ian. My first triathlon was the Big East Triathlon here in Essex in the UK. It's a real local race for me. And one of the reasons I chose it was it's it's got a shorter swim than a standard Olympic distance. So the distance, official distances were, I think 800 meter swim, 43K bike and a 10K run. Now on the day, it was so windy that the registration tent blew down and they actually shortened the swim to 400 meters. Um, and when everyone got in the water, it was so rough that kind of the pack collectively, I think, kind of shortened that to 350 metres somehow. Um, but it was, uh, for those reasons, for, for being such a windy day, such rough conditions and uh, my first triathlon. Yeah, that was my first race. Absolutely loved it. I think getting hit with some, uh, you know, evil Mother Nature stuff and your first race is like a double whammy. Good on you for finishing it, Ian. All right, we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about food. Ian, what's your number one, I don't care what I'm eating today, food? Food, that's what triathlon's all about, isn't it? Um, my, I don't care what I eat today, food. Do you know what I think I'd have to say it would be a full English breakfast. Um, sometimes referred to as a heart attack on a plate. It's one of those meals that, I mean, you should never start the day with anything like that. Um, and that's the reason that it would be kind of my I don't care what I eat today food because let's be honest if you've eaten like a thousand calories and God knows how much saturated fat before nine o'clock in the morning then you've pretty much written off the rest of the day so yeah it would have to be the good old full English for me. Gonna have to agree with you yeah something that potent before nine o'clock I I'm surprised you wouldn't take a nap right after eating something like that. Matt same question to you. Uh, my wife makes this, you know, homemade pizza. She makes the crust herself, uh, and then the kids can kind of make whatever toppings they want on there. My wife and I do the toppings that we want on there, uh, and it just turns out really, really good. We do that on Friday nights, and it's just super fun. You said magic words, pizza and homemade. Ah, 
Man. All right, Matt, I'm going to throw this next one at you first. What is it that got you motivated to start into triathlon? I grew up uh, running track and field and doing cross country, and I ran in college and just really loved every minute of it. Um, so when a doctor, this was you know, probably around 11 or 12 years ago, the doctor told me like, hey, take three months off of running. I said, okay. Uh, that same day I like looked on, I don't remember if it was eBay or Craigslist, I think, for a bike. And I was like, I'm gonna find a bike and I'm gonna go biking today. And I'm gonna find a pool and I'm gonna go swimming. And so I found um, a pool to swim in and a bike to, you know, ride. That was the wrong size bike, of course. You know, everyone's kind of same problem when they first get into this sport and they're trying to figure out all the things. Took a break from running, you know, wanted to do something, you know, to keep moving. And I, I chose those other two sports knowing that, you know, triathlon could potentially be a thing in the future. And the pool that I joined just happened to have like a really cool triathlon group. And, um, and so that's kind of how that ended up happening. Yeah, that was the motivation for starting. And then what I thought was interesting was like, you know, you do this slow build, a you know, sprint and then Olympic. And then uh, the next year I trained for a half Ironman distance. And then the following year, so three years of training, and I did a full Ironman distance. And that was the year where I was, you know, nervous enough about the race that I trained really throughout the winter and really kind of like invested in my training. And I really kind of grew attached to working out twice a day. And it it was funny because it reminded me of like collegiate running and just really training hard. And I always tell people like, you know, it was that kind of nostalgia for, you know, classic training that I used to do that really got me into triathlon. That was what kind of motivated me to stick with the sport, just really enjoying kind of that regimented, like hard work, you know, hard schedule of training, not necessarily the racing as much or, or doing really well in a specific race or anything like that, but just like having that regimented training. So that's one of those weird things that I, I like. I guess the spark can come from the oddest of places, but I mean, a doctor telling you, hey, you need to back off uh, being the spark. I guess that's both good and bad, right? Ian, what about you? My motivation for getting into triathlon. You know, I don't think I ever set out consciously to become a triathlete. It just kind of happened. If you wound the clock back 10-ish years, I got into cycling as a way to lose weight, and basically I halved my body weight. Now in the process of doing that, I got connected with a lot of local cyclists, just purely just to go out riding with. And uh, you know, you'd make connections, you'd, you'd hook up with people through Twitter and stuff like that, work out their local, you'd hook up, you'd get riding together and stuff like that. And a lot of these guys were triathletes. And there were two who I can think of who kind of were instrumental in influencing me towards triathlon. Now, one of these guys was training for his first Ironman and every ride was just Ironman this, Ironman that, a triathlon this, triathlon that, and it begins to rub off on you. But I think the bigger influence was one of the guys I used to ride with regularly was a coach with our local tri club, East Essex Tri, and um, he's a guy I, I still know and I am indeed an active member of East Essex Tri. But I remember at the time I was doing a lot of miles, I was doing a lot of training, you know, I was, goodness, I must have been getting 200 miles a week on the bike and I'd started running and what have you. And Dave said to me one day, why are you doing all these miles if you're not racing? And he'd made a really good point. So I ended up entering my first duathlon and absolutely loved it. And the rest, as they say from there, is history. I did foolishly, for my first triathlon event, I did enter a middle distance, the um, Fanbridge Half Iron here. Again, that's very close to my first, geographically very close to my first race. But I kind of chickened out of that one because I was not a good swimmer at the time. And that was, that had quite a challenging river swim on it. So I decided to, to get into an Olympic before I saw, you know, to walk before I could run sort of thing. So um, yeah, those were my motivations for getting into triathlon. I find it interesting that you also were pushed into triathlon by someone else's actions. Now for me, uh, I was, I don't want to say pushed into triathlon really, but I decided I'll just do a triathlon and see how that goes. That turned into somebody on the submarine I was stationed on saying, you can't do that, you're too big. And at that point, it was basically an I dare you 
So I had to do it. I did my first triathlon and lo and behold, I fell in love and there's no looking back on that. You know, uh, I'm glad it happened and I just want to keep at it. All right, Ian, I got two really easy questions for you. First question, your favorite discipline. And I'm going to follow that one up with your least favorite discipline. So I think the uh, most favorite and least favorite discipline is kind of the question that everyone, regardless of who they are, always asks a triathlete, isn't it? So let me begin with my least favorite. My least favorite is the run. I'm a terrible runner. Um, I I like it, don't get me wrong. I love a run in the morning uh, or in the evening, you know, getting out into the dark lanes as I've, as I've already expressed in one of my own vlogs. Um, but I just, I don't know, when I'm racing, I just don't enjoy the run. And that could be just because I'm just focusing on the end. I think my most favorite discipline, oddly, would be swimming. I'm a terrible swimmer, but um, there's just something about it. It's just the, you know, just, I find a certain sort of tranquility and I get into a rhythm and it's almost a little bit of serenity before everything goes crazy in the bike transition run and what have you. Um, now, having said that, if you've done a triathlon swim start, it's, there's nothing really serene about that, is there? Uh, but notwithstanding that, I don't mind a little bit of a punch up in the water to begin with. Um, and then, you know, once I've settled into a rhythm, absolutely love it. Serenity and a swim are two things that I never make any connection with, um, especially an open water swim at the beginning of a triathlon. All right, Matt, what's your answer? Uh, I am one of those weird people that really like all three. Um, favorite has to be running because I grew up running. I love running. If I could only do one sport, it would be running. However, uh, the, the hand that has been dealt to me is a little bit weird. I have some pretty bad ankle and Achilles issues. So I am enjoying biking and swimming. Uh, I'm doing more of that now than I am of the running. And I'm, I'm still hopeful that I'll be able to run in the future. And, you know, we'll see how that goes. But uh, swimming is tricky because, you know, I think even if you talk to someone who's passionate about swimming, you are still in the water, staring at a black line on the floor, occasionally doing a flip turn, and it, it, it can be boring. I do still think that open water is amazing. Uh, it can freak people out, you know, being out there in the open water, but, you know, I like to just kind of take my time, take breaks when I'm just training and just kind of soak in all the nature and everything that's out there. Cycling, you know, is, you know, one of those sports where, you know, I have such a good group of friends that do it. Uh, it's really fun to go out with them and do a ride. I don't even mind riding by myself. I don't do it as much, but I still love being on the bike going uh, a little bit faster and just kind of being able to travel further distances. So I think I would say, you know, running is my favorite. Swimming is my least favorite. That is definitely not the order in which I do the most. I'm probably swimming the most now and running the least. So there you have it. You know, I want to have to admit, I'm also doing a lot more swimming than either of the two other disciplines now. All right, next question I got to know is, what motivated you to start a triathlon related YouTube channel? Tell me, Matt. Uh, I would say, you know, a couple of things. Um, you know, one was just that I had you know, built up a weird amount of knowledge of just random stuff that you don't know when you start a sport. Really crazy, like obscure stuff, like what's more aerodynamic, you know, holding your hands like this or that, or where to put your water bottles on a bike, or how fast, you know, speed laces are compared to, you know, tying your shoes and stuff that saves you like seconds in a full Ironman, but doesn't really matter to anyone else. And YouTube's a great place for that kind of knowledge, just to pass it on to other people if they care about it. Uh, and so one of the things I wanted to do was like all the knowledge that I had picked up from, you know, the sport and just reading stuff and just kind of obsessing about it. I wanted to dump all of that onto YouTube. Uh, the other part I would say, you know, another big part was I was watching at the time, you know, just a couple of like uh, cinematography, videography kind of channels. YouTube channels. And I wanted to bring that to our sport, you know, something that was like, hey, you know, our sport can be attractive, it can be a beautiful sport. Uh, you know, and I, I hadn't seen anyone doing that really on YouTube and saying like, hey, this sport can be a pretty sport. And I think we're seeing more of that now that was, you know, three years ago. And 
uh, more people are kind of coming onto the platform and showing like, hey, you know, this is a cool sport. You see drone shots, you see people doing our sport in beautiful places. Uh, and so, you know, I'm still trying to capture some of that. You know, I always think about like, you know, if I could ever really show someone what it's like to be out on the trails running in nature, you know, how would that feel if they watched a video that really kind of felt encompassing, you know, of that activity. And I'm, I'm still trying to get there. I think, you know, I'm better than I was for sure. Uh, I still want to make a video talking about trail running just because it's like one of my favorite things and try to make it happen. No one's going to care about the video, but it's still one of those things. It's like a, a passion project that I'm trying to make happen. So that's definitely some of the things that motivated me to start a triathlon channel. Uh, and it's been fun. I've gotten to know so many cool people like you that are doing the same thing and just a lot of neat people that have commented through the videos and uh, I like it quite a bit. So I'm going to keep making videos uh, as long as I can uh, until it's not fun anymore, in which case I'll do something different. Oh, I have to agree with you, Matt. This is a beautiful sport. Um, it's a sport I love. It's a sport that I love participating in. Also for me, getting into this, let me meet, you know, the discussions I've had with you over the cinematography aspect of running a YouTube channel, uh, the equipment aspect, you know, and just triathlon in general. I've really enjoyed those. And I want to thank you specifically, Matt, for all the help you've given me. So Ian, I'd like to know what got you into this. So my motivation for starting the Fat Triathlete uh, YouTube channel, again, like getting into triathlon, it was one of these things that happened almost by accident. I've, I've had a YouTube channel for a long time. I, I consider myself to be a bit of a geek, so I like playing around with technology and cameras and all that good stuff. So I'd had a YouTube channel for a long time and way back when I was restoring cars and working on restoring an aircraft and stuff like that, I'd put bits and pieces on about that. Um, and it was like kind of one of those YouTube channels you see where they've got four or five odd videos that none of them really related to each other. And it wasn't until I started cycling and I started to do jobs on my bike, I kind of, the penny dropped that I could combine two things I really liked there. You know, I really liked making YouTube content and I really like getting the spanners out on my bike. So when I started to do jobs on my bike, I'd record it for YouTube. And it went on like that for probably a couple of years until I most recently, when this channel actually sort of stopped being just a channel in my name and became the Fat Triathlete, the actual motivation for that was I knew I was in a bad place fitness-wise and I wanted to get back. And I'm somebody who, if you went back 10, 12 years, you know, I kind of halved my body weight. And one of the things I always regretted was I never documented that journey. And it struck me that with the YouTube channel here, I've got a real opportunity to document that journey and also do some good into the process. You know, when I start way back when, when I started losing weight and got into cycling, it was always, I don't know, I always felt kind of awkward as the big guy on the bike. And I just thought it might be a very positive thing to do to start a YouTube channel with a guy who does triathlon, who has done triathlon, who is an Iron Man, who is a fat bloke and working on getting some of that timber away and getting back to fitness. Because I think that could be the story for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, it was just hopefully something that would one act as a little bit of a video diary for myself, but also um, something that hopefully would be useful and um, inspirational to others. You know, you touched on something there. I think it's, I love the fact that you wanted to use the YouTube channel as a diary for your progression through um, weight loss. And specifically the part I like best is that your intent is for that to inspire others, maybe to do something similar or even to get into the sport that, you know, the three of us here all love, obviously. Good on you for wanting to inspire others and using your channel to do it. All right. Those are all the questions. Yeah, there's not a whole lot more. I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing out. All right, there you have it. Myself, Ian, Matt, we're all in this because we have a love for a sport and we found sort of a passion for this YouTube thing. That being said, if you've liked this video, if you've liked my interview of Matt and Ian, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel or you just haven't done so yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell so you get some notifications. So, till next time, 
keep on keeping on.